Hi, and how are you? And I hope that everybody is doing great. And I hope that everybody's excited for chunky sweater weather, chunky knit season, because I'm ready. And I have a lot to talk about today in terms of I have, I have a new sweater pattern that I'm presently wearing um, that I'm about to hit publish on. And I have an update for Chunky Yarn to go alongside it. I also have some just thoughts about what I do when I'm not feeling like knitting <laughs> and how I get back in the groove. You know what I mean? Just some sort of thoughts on how to get out of a knitting funk because I was in one and I am now so out of it. And I'm really excited about knitting again. And I just thought it would be maybe kind of fun to talk my way through that. But let's start with this pattern. Let's start with, this is called the Cozier sweater pattern. And uh, I am filming this, it is Thursday. And I'm launching the pattern on Friday, October 14th. So depending on when you're watching this, it may already be live. And um, I'm very excited about it. So I actually, I have had this sweater in my brain wanting to write it and publish this pattern for, I'm going to say years. Like it's been a, on my mind for a while. Just, it, it, it's a drop shoulder, boxy, loose, chunky, mock turtleneck, um, fun, so easy, easy to throw on, easy to wear, super easy to knit. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I actually brought all this yarn caked up with me on vacation this summer to get started on this pattern on this project. And I somehow I just didn't get to it. And so I still had it like in its little project bag um, beside the sofa. And then in September, I was just struck with the desire to cast on I did. And three days later, I was wearing the sweater. You're like, what? Yes, I knitted in three days and I'll tell you why. One, because it's a chunky gauge. It's three stitches per inch. It knit this on eight millimeter, which I think is maybe like a US 11. I go by millimeters, I'm Canadian. I don't know the US equivalents of everything, but it's a big chunky needle, okay? And it, so the gauge alone makes it knit quickly. And also when I'm excited about a new pattern, I'm just, I race to the finish line, right? Like I just want to be able to try it on blocked, finished to see if it worked, like if it came out the way that I wanted it to. And so once I cast on, it was sort of hard to put it down. I, I just really wanted to see how, where it was going. And then third reason of why it's so fast to knit is because I knitted in stripes. And for me, stripes is so motivating. I start knitting and you just want to get to the next color, right? So I knit my sample in random stripes. Like I tried to be as random as I could. I tried to mix up the colors as, you know, well, you can see I did, I mean, these colors all kind of go in the same family. But then I just went to gray and then I went to blue. Um, yeah, like there's no, the sleeves are different. There's no rhyme or reason about where the colors went, how many stripes. The only thing that I made sure was like, I did not do many stripes of the same width. I really wanted it to be random, just, just super fun. And that's hard. Like I'm kind of belaboring the point because it can be really difficult to be random, right? Um, we always try to sort of make things make sense. And for this sweater, I just thought that like a really easy breezy random look would be best. I also, I did, every time I changed a color, I knit the first row of the new color in pearl rather than stocking knit stitch. So you get this ridge and you get this transition, like a textural transition, as well as like you get these little, or these little lines of where the pearl bump shows the, the the new color and the old color. Anyways, I just love it. It makes it kind of less, I was going to say fussy. I don't think this would be fussy if you didn't do those points. I just, or if you didn't do it in pearl, it just makes it a bit more boho. Add some texture. It adds some laissez-faire, <laughs> some cush. I do like the added texture because this is clearly a very cozy, chunky knit, right? So let's like really go with that. At any rate, so 
I knit this sweater in a matter of days. I was very excited about it. And of course, because this always happens every single time I knit a new design, as I was knitting it, and this was my vision, stripes, colorful, ridges, boom. It was coming out exactly as I wanted. But as I'm sitting there, knitting it, working on it, I'm thinking to myself, oh wow, this would also be beautiful in a solid. <laughs> and it's something that I always do. To me, it's super obvious that if a pattern is striped and you just really like the fit, the shape, the design of it, but you want it in a solid, just don't stripe it, right? Same goes reversed. If you like a pattern, if you like the fit and the style and the shape of a pattern and it's knit in a single color, but you want a striped sweater, just stripe it. Add stripes. It's, um, it seems unnecessary in a way. Like to some, you're gonna, people watching this will be like, yeah, duh, I know. But you'd be shocked at the amount of people who um, only knit striped patterns striped and only knit solid patterns solid. Like, you know, the sample is so critical. It's really, really, it's something I think about a lot and I want everybody to stretch out of that. I want you to not be so, <laughs> don't be attached to the sample. You know, if somebody knits a sample, if there's a sample of a sweater in a colorway that isn't a color that you like, knit it in a color that you like. I mean, that seems so obvious, but you'd be shocked at the amount of emails that I get from people who will say, oh, I really like this sweater, but I don't wear blue, to which I'm like, what? Okay. Uh, but then also that what was because you don't wear blue. Who doesn't wear blue? Um, but also sometimes people just feel like they need to stick to the sample. And I'm just here to tell you, do not use it as a guide. <laughs> so Having said that, I'm knitting this, I'm loving it, I put it on, I'm thrilled, and then I'm desperate to see what it looks like just as a solid. And as I was knitting, as I was sort of deciding what I was gonna do for the solid version, I had considered at still doing the textural bands or, you know, pearl rows, and I was considering making it in a way that was way more symmetrical, like doing them every 10 rounds or something like that, evenly spaced, which is something that you could totally still do. I opted for my sample to keep it all stockinette stitch. I just really wanted to see the shape. You know, I wanted it to be totally simple. But if texture is something that you like and you've got a stockinette stitch pattern that fits, that you love, and you want to just add some pearl ridges, do it. So here is my solid version. I knitted in natural because I really wanted it to be basically like the total opposite of, of this one. Um, and something just like a total basic B sweater. And this, it really, I'm surprised at how much I absolutely adore it. Now, sidebar, as I was knitting this one, like I was wondering, oh God, I should have knitted in a speckle because it really would lend itself really well to being knit in a speckle because chunky yarn takes speckles so beautifully. You get like each stitch a different color. They're really, um, it can be really, really striking. And it's also just such a, a simple shape and, oh my gosh, what have I done? I'm sorry. Um, just such a simple shape that it can really highlight a speckle beautifully. So I was like, oh, I should have knit this in a speckle instead of in natural and all white, but I really wanted this white sweater. Also, I was thinking, who do I think I am knitting a white sweater? This sweater is going to get dirty. I'm just not mature enough to be able to not spill coffee, tomato soup, makeup on a pure white sweater. So this is my plan. I'm going to wear the heck out of this white sweater as long as I can. And when it gets grungy or dingy or stained, <laughs> like I'm assuming it inevitably will, I'm going to dye it already in the sweater. I'm going to speckle it post knitting. You know what I mean? Um, maybe I'll never need to. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit and it's not going to, I'm not going to destroy it. Um, but if I do, then I'm excited to speckle it and see, like, see what that happens. I'll just like, maybe I'll just speckle the top gradient speckle. I have no idea, but I'm going to I'm excited to potentially dye a sweater post knitting, which is something that I've always 
wanted to do, um, but have never done. I think it's because it just takes so long to knit a sweater, right? You've put so much work into it. Uh, and then you like it when it's done and I don't feel like it needs more. I, I don't, I'm not sure. It's always something that I've wanted to do. And so even if I don't do it to this specific one, it's, it's percolating. It's something I would like to try. Uh, but also this was another three day knit, three days. I didn't expect to knit this one so fast because I didn't really feel like, um, you know, I knew the pattern was going to work because I had already knit it. I knew I was going to be happy with it. And there wasn't that same sort of like fervor of excitement that like, I need to see how it goes. And there wasn't the stripes, but it knits itself guys, a chunky knit. Now I also knit professionally for a living. So I probably have more knitting time than you do possibly when I'm working on something, I can really throw myself into it. Right. So like, don't think you've got to knit it in three days. This is not a race or a competition. Um, I just think it's of note because who, you know, what sweater can you knit in three days? And with that, I also wanted to mention that I knit this sweater. I knit my two samples in two different sizes because this one has more positive ease. The solid color one has still a significant amount of positive ease on me, but just a little bit less. Both sizes work, both sizes I love. And I just kind of like to show a bit of versatility, you know, depending on how you like a pattern or you like to wear your sweaters, you choose what works for you. And along those same lines, I wanted to show you another chunky pattern that I don't know if I've talked about here. And so I'm going to today because it's very, very similar in, in the versatility. And I don't know, not every knitting pattern needs to be super versatile. Like that's not the only goal of mine when I'm designing a pattern but when I do design one that is just stocking at stitch or that is you know pretty clean lines doesn't have any like really really specific details I just go wild with the with the potential for modification you know what I mean and it just gets me really really excited and so the, the yarn you choose to knit it in the colors you choose to knit it in the size you choose to knit it the way you choose to deal with the um the ribbing with the cuffs like if you I had actually you might even be able to tell can you see that I originally had cast off here my original sample did not have the mock turtleneck actually it just had like a kind of like a crew neck and ultimately I found that like was such a big cozy sweater I just wanted more cozy and so when I was wearing it the first little while after I finished knitting it I felt like even though it looked fine it looked good I, I wanted it wasn't giving me enough cozy vibe as I needed so I unpicked the cast off put on more stitches but you can see that like it sort of changes directions the ribbing is a little bit skewed that's just because this wasn't I didn't block again I had already blocked the whole sweater and you know I think I actually re-knit the collar the day I was planning on taking the photos of the sweater so I didn't re-block it forgive me um but I'm going to show you my metropolis sweater so my metropolis design is a free pattern on Ravelry and it is similarly this was knit in a speckle and it's a raglan rather than a drop shoulder it's knit at the same gauge I knit these ones the sample with less positive ease than the sweater that I'm currently wearing much less but you could knit it with as much positive ease as you want and this one, we're talking cozy. It's got like the world's best turtleneck and I absolutely love it. And this sweater really highlights, I'm gonna insert some photos that show how beautiful speckles are on Chunky. Cause I don't know if this is really doing it justice, um, but it's really stunning. I love this sweater. And this one, I did generous ribbing on the cuffs and on the body has like six or eight inches of, of ribbing. It's just sort of, you know, the style that I was going for. And then I knit a second version of this sweater, of my Metropolis sweater. I knit it in a larger size for a little bit more positive ease. I knit it without a turtleneck. I did less ribbing on the hem, just like a two inches of ribbing instead of like the six for like a statement rib. And of course, I... I did marled. I marled it. <laughs> I, I used three strands of fingering weight and one strand of mohair held together to create, to achieve a chunky gauge. And it gives you the possibility, like so many color dreams come true. <laughs> 
when you marl knitting like this. Um, it was so much fun. I don't know if I've talked about this here before, but if I did, it was a long time ago because I'm the world's most inconsistent uploader. But um, I've got sparkly sock yarn in here. I've got speckles. I've got solids. I had some scraps that were such tiny scraps. I just used them all up. The sleeves do not match the body. They coordinate. You know, I was going for sort of like the same effect, but some of the yarns I would run, I ran out of before I had completed both sleeves and it's fine. It's totally fine. Like you would never know. And this is one of my favorite sweaters. It's really a um, sweatshirt fit. So comfortable, so cozy, so easy to wear. And this is sort of the vibe, the vibe of Metropolis <laughs> is what I was hoping to reproduce in this cozier pattern, just with a different sort of construction and a different shoulder shaping. And it's less sporty. Something about a raglan is really sporty to me. Just throwing that out there. Not that it's neither good nor bad. Um, but so picture this knit marled, picture it knit in a speckle. It's like, these are all, or picture Metropolis knit striped like this, you know, do you know, you know what I'm saying? They're so versatile, these patterns. And I just can't wait to see. I really hope that people, you know, really make them their own. And uh, I'm excited to see what you do with that. So we have a chunky update coming up. If you're not watching this the day I post it, it's possible the chunky update has passed, but there will be more. So this is not really that time sensitive. Uh, we've focused on doing sort of easy to wear, beautiful. I call them like neutrals with a pop because I want to wear speckles. I want to knit with fun colors, but I don't want to I mean, it's hilarious that I'm saying this as I'm wearing a very multicolored sweater and talking about how my most favorite sweater is this very multicolored sweater. Um, but <laughs> when it comes to knitting a sweater in a solid speckle and in, in one whole sweater in one speckled colorway, I, I'm just a real sucker for a neutral with a pop, a wearable speckle, one that doesn't make you look like you're you know what? I'm hesitating to say things because it's like, so what's the problem? I was going to say, doesn't make you look like you're a preschooler. So what if you want to dress like a preschooler? Do it. <laughs> what does a preschooler dress like? Preschoolers are very hip. Like there's nothing really, I don't, there's no good colors, bad colors. However, from my experience selling yarn, I will say that there are some colors that people prefer for sweaters. <laughs> so we've focused on that. We've also focused on some sort of fall colors. This is not particularly a fall color, but it is a beautiful wearable speckle. It's like a denim blue with, it has some burgundy and like kind of mauvey purpley speckles as well as some navy. It's really, really would knit up beautifully. And then this is a very, very autumnal colorway that I absolutely love. None of these colors are named yet, by the way. I will be naming them this afternoon, hopefully. And uh, cause they're all brand new, one of a kinds. I said, Chris, go to town do me some sweater speckles. And he did this. This is pretty special. This is not like generally the type of thing that I get that excited about because it's not blue, but it is so lush and autumny and it's the exact colors of the oak and birch leaves in our front yard right now. And I absolutely love it. So hopefully you'll find something that you like in tomorrow's update and you will knit yourself a fantastic sweater. Uh, and then I just wanted to show if you're not in the mood for sweaters, I have my, I think that I have two favorite chunky hats. This one is my Hira pattern. It's chunky. It's textured. It's a speckle. It's beautiful. I wear this hat a lot and this was, I had to go dig this out of my hat bin and I absolutely love it. So there's, there's one option as if you need me to tell you that you could knit a hat, but you can knit a hat, friends, and chunky yarn. The next is, this is possibly my favorite hat. This is called Alpine Trails uh, by Knitterella. I knit this several years ago. Oh, and I knit it in natural. I knit this in white, so maybe I can, and it's still white. This is probably my most worn winter hat. I absolutely love this hat cable. It's got an interesting construction. It's so 
perfect. It's really cute and stylish. And you know what? I see a future photo happening where I'm wearing my white hat and my white sweater. And I may be drinking cocoa. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, and this hat, it's white and it's still white. So maybe I will not need to dye. Oh, great. Look what I'm doing here. This is working. Okay, well, I have another hat. So do you know what? I think that's all I really needed to say about Chunky. I think you know I love Chunky yarn. I love knitting Chunky knits. Um, my only problem with them is that sometimes they, they are too quick. <laughs> but I'm teasing because that's not really a problem. Switching gears to like the total opposite, a fingering weight, colorful or stranded knitting hat. So, wow, my segues are like poetic. But basically, <laughs> we're now just completely talking about something different. And that thing is how I was in a slump, I was in a rut, I wasn't feeling inspired, I had nothing to knit. And then one day, boom, this hat popped up in my feed. I hate Halloween. Like, I hate Halloween. If we could just skip Halloween the whole month. Now, you know what? I love the month of October. I hate how Halloween has taken over the entire month of October, and I can't go for a walk without seeing, like, guts and brains and, like, skeleton attacking other... I don't know. I don't like the gross gore and like blood and how Halloween has been taken over by like glamorizing murderers and like ugh, cute kids in princess costumes, dinosaur costumes, even like a grim reaper costume. All these things are fine. Adults in costumes. I'm you can't you can't talk me into being OK with that. Um, never. I went to one. Halloween party as an adult one and it was a good friend of mine and I felt like I needed to be supportive I went as like I think I was Superman so I was just wearing like red and blue and like I had I borrowed from my mom still had her Superman cape that she made for my brother for Halloween when he was six he's 40 so I borrowed that cape and wore that cape and I was like, I'm Superman. No weird face paint, no blood coming down out of my eyeballs. Oh my God. Anyway, but that was it. I was like, I'm drawing the line. I will wear, I have a headband with cat ears. That's what I will do for Halloween every year. So anyway, I just feel like the context of how much I don't like Halloween <laughs> is relevant because I still knit this hat. And you're like, why, Tannis? Why? And I'll tell you why. Because my son loves Halloween. My husband also happens to like Halloween. So it works out fine. Like, my kids know that Halloween isn't my thing. Um, but I don't discourage them from enjoying the season. You know what I mean? I do their costumes. We buy candy. We go trick-or-treating. We decorate. Except for every time they're like asking me about decorating for Halloween and can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, talk to your dad, talk to your dad. It's his domain. So sometimes in the marriage and in life, you just have to delegate. You have to have boundaries, know what you can do. I will do all the Christmas decorating. I will do all the baking. I will do so much. I'll, I'll carve a pumpkin. I will not spend uh, I will not set up a, a graveyard in my front yard. Anyway, wow, this is a this is a Halloween podcast now. So I knit this. My son loves Halloween. Okay, he has these little gloves with skeleton bones on them that he wears year round. Basically, he has skeleton PJs that glow in the dark that are a year round thing as well. And when I saw this hat, I was like, oh, he would love it. And it is as far, see, this I'm actually fine with. I mean, that's actually cute. The skeletons are holding hands. The little ghosts actually look like they're like, oh, oh, but like delightedly like, oh, they're, I think they're adorable. So I knit this hat for him. People who talk about hats needing to be all knit in multiple sizes. I question because my, I can share hats with all of my kids and so could my husband and 
we all have very different size heads and they're all stretchy at any rate this got me out of my slump it was just so gratifying so satisfying and so fun to knit and i got to use so he picked the colors of course he wanted he loves orange He's just like a born Halloween kid. And then this beautiful color. It's not black. It's like a really deep plum. I don't know if you can tell, but it's, so it's, I, I like the colors a lot. And when you're knitting something in, a, in like black and white or even worse, plum and white, this has like a lot of red in it. Um, I soaked a little bit of the red yarn first to make sure that it wasn't going to bleed because I could have ended up with a pink and plum hat rather than white you know if the red had all bled so and it didn't bleed and that's fantastic and then I knit it and then I soaked it in cold water white is still super super crisp if the red had bled I would have just soaked it in cold water until it stopped running until the, the water was clear but I didn't have that problem thank goodness and uh, yeah, this just got me excited about color work. It got me excited about knitting again. It really got me out of my funk. So I guess my recommendation, my whole tip for like, if you're in a knitting rut, if you're in a funk, is to knit a really small, satisfying project. That's one approach. Okay, so this was that for me, a small, satisfying project. It used stash. There was no investment necessary. And... It was just delightful. The second sort of approach that I sometimes take is I go to my stash, I find a special skein of yarn that I've been saving. And for me, that's generally something colorful, like a special speckle. And I find a project that's going to be perfect for it. And so the other, the thing that I cast on after this, like the thing that this led to was for me doing exactly that. And I picked out this skein of DK weight yarn. It's a speckle. It was a one of a kind. It's absolutely stunning. And I've been saving it for something. And I decided it was like out of nowhere. I'm designing a brioche scarf. <laughs> so I'm using the speckle. Dee, 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 dee. And then I'm using black as the sort of shadow color. And I'm doing some increases and decreases. And it's zigging and it's zagging. And it's so satisfying. Every stitch is a different color. It's just really, really fun to knit. I've never designed anything in brioche. Um, and I'm excited to try. So this is definitely still a work in progress. And of course, as I'm knitting this, I'm thinking of a hat. I'm thinking of a sweater. Maybe it'll be a little collection. Maybe it will never get published ever because um, my plans aren't well thought out. Who knows? But you know, the spark has been ignited and I'm excited about knitting again. I'm excited. It's not like I wasn't excited about knitting. I was just in a funk, you know, like nothing was really sparking my interest. Although I will say I did take my own advice and I cast on for a sock and a really fun speckle and I hated it. So it didn't work. It was both a small satisfying project and a fun color from the stash and it backfired. So it will not always work. It's not a foolproof approach, but it's an approach. It's worth a shot if you're trying to get your mojo back. And this I am really pumped about. I'm really my, the reason why I'm like, and maybe it won't work out. Maybe I won't publish it. Is that basically a lot of it depends on how long I can get this scarf with just a single skein of both. Because I only have one skein of this. And so it, if it ends up being like an awkwardly short scarf, what am I going to do? Like, it's not very fun. <laughs> it's not very helpful. I either have to, you know, rip it out, rejig it to make it narrower and longer. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be an appropriate length. And so, um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't get, you know, worried about the what ifs ahead of time. But that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm really into versatile chunky knits and I'm really into small satisfying projects. Sometimes, they overlap. And um, that's it for today, I think, friends. I hopefully will have a finished scarf the next time we chat. I will have, well, actually, I have a whole new pattern that we've just like jumped over. So maybe I'll be back to talk about my Iggy Peck sweater next time. But I think I would like to film that one with Chris because I knit that sweater for Chris. And so he probably has a lot to say about it. And until then, my friends, thank you for watching. Thanks for hopefully working on your knitting while I'm sitting here and chit-chatting away about chunky knits. 
and um, have a great one.